folks, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're doing a how to sharpen video. The context will be the new R1 sharpener by Hapstone, but, but even if you don't have that sharpening system, the vast majority of what I have to say applies to any of the guided sharpening systems you have out there. That's if you've got a KME, if you've got a, a TS Prof, uh, the list could go on and on and on. Almost everything I have to say will apply to all of those. Just a few things. One main thing will be specific to the uh, R1 by Hapstone. And that is when I talk about the thickness compensator. But even then, other systems that have thickness compensators, the same basic stuff will apply. And before I get to that, let me cover what those five things are going to be. I'm just going to list them, and then we'll get into the meat of this video. So the five things I'm going to show is how to adjust the throw, that's the length of the uh, throw of your uh, system, how going back and forth. You probably can't see that on the video because <laughs> that's off screen. Sorry about that. I'm going to talk about how to actually sharpen, how to move that stone across your blade. I'm going to talk about some clamping tips, and that applies to almost anything as well, as, as does the previous one. I'm going to talk about flattening your stones, and that goes for any type of sharpening system you've got. And uh, the last thing will be the thickness adjuster. I'm going to try to keep this video to around 20 minutes, but it might take longer because when I get going, I start sharing all kinds of details because I really like helping you guys and gals to do a great job with your sharpening because there's nothing better than a brand new knife than a brand new knife with a super sharp edge. Keep watching. Okay, here we go. The first thing is adjusting these devices. Here's a close-up picture of what I'm talking about. Different sharpening systems have slightly different things. This one uses a spring. Some of them use uh, some rubber washers in there, what have you. Uh, first, let's put a stone in here. Let's put a knife in there. One thing that I didn't mention, and I'm going to cover it briefly in here, is how to get your right angle. What you need is a digital angle finder, and on the R1, what you need is a magnetic digital angle finder. So we turn that guy on, and we put it on this piece of steel right here, because this piece of steel doesn't have room, and this piece isn't necessarily flat, because it flexes when you tighten these screws. So you put it right down on there, and when it's sitting the way you want it to sit, you'll zero it, and on this one, the zeroing is right there. And with your stone attached, you put that on your cutting edge. And let's move it this way so you can see in the middle here. Uh, we've got a steel spot right here, and we put it on there. And we put it down. That tells me the angle difference that this is right here. And right now, the angle is 20.3. And uh, you adjust this up or down to change that angle. And uh, if you want to use this piece right here to do some micro changes, you put it nearby where it is, maybe a little lower, you tighten it up, you drop that down, and now you can move this by turning it, and it changes the angle. If the angle's too low, you turn it to make it higher. If it's too high, you turn it to make it lower. And when you reach the extremes, if you have to, you manually move this whole point. That's how you get your angle. Once you get your angle, you tighten this, you tighten this, you're done. So that's how you find your angle. And the angle that you choose to use will depend on what angle you want. If you want to use the exact angle that the knife has right now, then you use a sharpie instead of doing any of this other stuff you don't need this you don't need this at all if you're just going to match the factory angle but be aware if you've watched any of my videos the angle that one side of the knife has been sharpened to by the factory is going to be different than the angle that the other side was sharpened to it just happens every single knife that i have checked it's different from one side to another and that's because people hand sharpen it and now what you want to do is adjust these 
things for the throw. So you push it all the way back. And what you want to make sure is that the stone here stays on the cutting edge and doesn't go past. Because if you go past, if you slide your stone over, now you're going to scrape up the main bevel on your knife. And you're going to end up putting scratch marks all across the face of your knife if you go too far that way. So this, I should close knives before I put them down, shouldn't I? <laughs> so you put this just before it comes to the end so that when you push all the way over, the stone stays on top of the edge instead of going up onto the bevel. And you check both ends of the blade. Make sure the heel of the blade closest to the handle and the tip of the blade all stay clear when you're pushing it all the way in. And this one's not quite good enough. I have to move it back a little bit. So I move it back a little bit, tighten it again. And oops, I moved it the wrong way. Got to move it this way. And you want it fairly close, but not past. Because if you don't make it fairly close, then you'll only be using a small section in the middle of your stone. And you want to use most of your stone. So that's the first thing. This is important. This is very good. Some sharpening systems, the more budget you get, don't have these. And if you don't have these, you're just going to have to be super careful when you sharpen your knife that you don't go over the edge. Now you're actually going to sharpen. When you're sharpening, what's the first thing you need to know about this? The first thing is when you're sliding your stone across the cutting edge, after you've got your angle and everything figured out, don't be pushing down on the system. If you put weight on here, you're going to cause things to flex a little bit and they're going to go out of the true angles that you have already measured. Now, if you put a little tiny bit of pressure on, that's fine, but don't be putting pressure down on there. No, not much weight at all. You just put enough pressure on so that the stone stays on the cutting edge and doesn't skip or bounce or anything. And then you're off to, off to the races sharpening. One other thing, what if you want to match the angle that you've got here? Let's say your knife has been sharpened, but uh, you don't really want to sharpen it anymore. You just want to get that really nice mirror edge on it. So you want to use the really fine stones on it. Or if you just want to match the angle that you have and you don't know what angle it is, you don't really care, you just want to match it. How do you do that? So for both of those scenarios, I choose a very fine stone to start with. I take a Sharpie brand marker because they're the best. The markers that Hapstone gives with your systems, I just don't like them. They're not good enough. They don't leave a dark enough line. And so I paint, basically, the main, the cutting edge of the knife here. Try not to get it all over the place, just on the cutting edge from the tip of the edge to the full shoulder. And I do that on both sides. And uh, put that on there. And remember that magnifying glass that I talked about? It's really good to have one of those. So now what you do is you take your stone and you slide it across there and then you take a look with your magnifying glass. Where did it rub? This piece of plastic here is going to represent just a little bit of the edge right there, just that shiny edge. The blade is mounted on like this in this orientation right here, just like this. So if it's just rubbing a little bit of the ink off of right here, that means that your stone uh, or the whole uh, arm that you're sharpening with is too low and it needs to be raised up. If it's just taken off a little bit on this edge here, that means it's too high and it needs to be lowered down. When you take a pass and your sharpening stone goes across and it wipes off ink all the way along that part, then you know you've got the angle matched exactly. And then you go to town sharpening. Or if you're just doing a mirror edge, then you might want to use that same fine grit stone and just clean that thing up as best you can. And uh, off you go. So it's important to get a good marker because a cheap marker is going to wipe off too easily or you can't paint on there to leave a really good solid surface. It might be hard to see. Um, so you want a good quality marker so that you can see exactly what's happening when you're doing that. That's another trick. Now, this next part's going to go quickly because I've mentioned it in a number of videos. 
I adjust the angle that I attack everything on. So I go straight up and down with my first stone, like perpendicular to the edge. So this is my cutting edge. I move my stone, I move my stone straight back and forth. On the next grit, I change the angle a little bit and I go up on an angle. I actually do it this way. And I go and I sharpen it this way using the next grit. The next grit, after that, I go like that and I sharpen it this way. The reason for that is you want to remove the little scratches that you're putting in with your sharpening stones. The coarser the grit, the bigger the scratches that you make. And that's why you don't want to go exactly straight up and down with every single grit because then you're going to end up with scratches. You know, the, the deep scratches won't get removed. So you keep changing the angles back and forth. Now you can just go one angle, one this way, next time this way if you want to. I tend to go, you know, a little bit of an angle this way, maybe, you know, 15 degrees, 15 degrees this way. Next time I go 30 degrees and 30 degrees this way. And then the fourth one, I start again with straight 15, 15, 30, 30, straight. And I keep going up. And the reason I'm saying that I do so many is I like to do small grit steps. Some guys do big grit steps. Some guys double it. You know, if they if they sharpen with, uh, I'm just going to use silly numbers just to make it easy to remember. If you sharpened with a hundred grit stone, the next time they sharpen with a 300 grit. And then the next time they sharpen with a 600 grit or even higher, 800 grit. I like stepping up by only about 50%. So if I go with a 100 grit stone, next time I use 150. The next time I use 220. The next time I use, you know, 320. You know, small steps. And I do a whole bunch of them. And the reason I do that is I'm doing very little pressure. I find that I uh, remove less of the material off my stone and I end up removing less material off of my blade when I'm doing many small steps. Does it take longer? No, it doesn't take any longer because I'm not taking as much time with each stone. It, the, the three or four seconds that it takes to change your stone is no big deal. That doesn't add a lot of time. Changing your stones doesn't add a lot of time. So I like to do a lot of different grits and I like to do them uh, just a little bit, a little bit of pressure, clean it up, and then the next one and the next one. Some people concern themselves with burrs. Now, if you are one of those burr people, more power to you, go for it. I do it visually. Instead of going for a burr, I make sure that that whole edge has been ground. And I use a little magnifying glass or a big magnifying glass and I take a look and you can see clearly when you've got a magnifying glass, if that specific grit has, you know, gone all the way from the shoulder, that's the main bevel. And then you've got the shoulder by the cutting edge all the way to the tip of the edge. You can see, and you'll practice over time. Buy yourself some really cheap knives to practice with to learn that. Either go to a thrift store and grab some knives or go to some place like Walmart, especially if you're in the United States. In the United States at Walmart, you can get knives for three three dollars, less than that sometimes. Uh, some of these were a buck fifty that my friend sent to me. Inexpensive, great for practicing and for practicing different kind of grinds and cleaning it up. Beautiful. That's how to actually sharpen the edge. And of course, with this thing's got a detent, you sharpen one side with one grit, you flip it over, you do the other side with the same grit. I switch grits do the side I just finished, and then I flip it over into the other side, switch grits, sharpen, flip it over, <laughs> yep, sharpen. So you don't do sharpening, flip, sharpen, and then flip back and change the grits, uh, because then you're flipping more times than you need to. Yeah, it's just, you're wasting time. I forgot to mention this last step. When you get to your final stone, this thing's a ruby. It's about 3,000 grit. On the last one, after I've cleaned it up all the way across and gotten my angle, then I do a side-to-side -side motion. I go across the blade instead of uh, up and down perpendicular to the blade. I finish going sort of along the blade, I should say. So I go along the cutting edge, just ever so slightly moving it downward. So 
I'm going this way really, really slowly, just a little bit, and I go across and down. And so I'm going across and down, across and down, and across and down, all the way down the stone. And then I inspect it, and if it's good enough, I'm done. If not, I start again across and down, across and down, across and down, all the way up. Make sure it's wet. I like to use soapy water on these stones. That's what I use on almost all my stones, soapy water to lubricate everything to make it go. Um, even stones that say they don't need uh, like lubricating oil or water or anything, I still use soapy water all the time. It's just the way I do it. It works well and that's my standard way of doing things. Okay, so now it's time for some clamp tips. So I'm going to get this out of the way. Some clamp tips. And this time, some of this stuff is applicable, a lot of this stuff, stuff is applicable to other sharpening systems too, and not just the R1. So the very first thing about clamp tips is do not over tighten. No matter what kind of clamps you got, do not over tighten. Now, most of your clamps are metal on metal. So what do you do to avoid scratching up the face? Especially if, you know, you tighten it up. Let's just do a for instance here. It's tightened up, but, you know, it's not tightened up well enough and it starts moving back and forth in there and you've moved it and stuff. And so you readjust it and you tighten it again. You keep doing that and there you go. You've scratched up the main bevel of your, I mean, the flat on your knife. And that gets ugly quick. And if it's one of your better knives that you love, you're going to be upset. So what some people have done is they line the clamps on the inside. I don't like that idea for one main reason. Um, how are you going to attach that liner on either side? Some people use leather. That's a bad idea for the main reason of now you've just reduced the thickness of steel that you can put in there. And this guy can go up to half an inch thick. Sorry, a quarter of an inch thick, half of half an inch. So you can put a quarter inch thick steel in there. And if you line it with leather, you know, you've maybe got that down by another half. So instead of that, what I do is I take painter's tape and they're usually available in green or blue. You can use masking tape too. The reason I don't use masking tape is it's a little over sticky. And so then it's a little more work to clean it off. And so I put tape on the flat on one side, fold it over to the other side, make sure there's no wrinkles or anything on there. And if it goes so far that it goes over to the cutting edge, then I very carefully, you know, rip off or use a scissor or whatever. I don't fold it back because that takes up space. I tear off or cut off some of that edge, you know, so that the tape doesn't go all the way to the cutting edge. So now I've got tape that's flat, right on the flats, and I use that to put it in there, and now I clamp it on. That way, if there is a little bit of movement or something, no worries, you're not going to scratch up your knife. Another thing is, remove excessive stuff that you don't need. Now, most of your knives, if they're like a three and a half, up to a four inch blade on this system, you're not going to need these extra outside things. So, yeah, take them off and get them out of the way. And on this uh, system, it's really easy to remove them. Now, sometimes, and I'm going to tell you in just a second why you might want to keep these. <laughs> but first off, if you can, if you don't need them, remove them. Get them out of the way. Uh, and so I have them off most of the time, and then I just put them on when they're going to come in handy to have them on. So any knife that's got a reasonable flat on the face on the on the knife. So this knife here, it's got a hollow grind, but it's got a flat along the spine. I just use this right here. I put it in there and uh, I'm gonna remove this. That's allowing it to squeeze together as much as it wants to. And I just let the spring hold it, whatever tightness it wants. And then I tighten it up till just before it starts causing these steel springs here. That's what these are. These plates are actually springs before it causes them to start moving. So just at that little bit there. Then I tighten these down. 
and I want to put the clamps as close to the middle between the heel and the tip as I can. Right now I'm way down by the heel, right? So I'm going to loosen this back up again and I'll move it a little bit because I want it in the middle. So the middle of the length of the blade is on the middle of this plate. That's not essential. It's just a good idea if you can do that. Now, if you've got a knife like this one, so here we go. This is the P105K by Rake. The flat part of the knife is only, I should have got a pen or something to point with. Let me use this knife to point with. The flat part that I can clamp on is only up here by the Ricasso. Since it's basically a full flat grind, I can't, there's no flat area here. It's only right there. So in that, in that case, if this knife was like that, I wouldn't be clamping it in the middle. I'd be clamping it on this end. And so let me show you that. I'll try not to waste time, but I'll show you that. Now, what I might do if it's a longer blade, I'll put this back on one of these so that I can keep it closer to the center. And I'll show you how I do this. This is a trick you want to know. If you've got like the TS Prof, you can do the same kind of thing on there with their system. So I put the knife in here and I'm using this clamp to clamp on the flat part, the main flat part. So I put it in. Since the flat is right near the, the handle, put that in there. So what I do is I tighten this one up on the flat. Not all the way tight, just fairly tight. And then I adjust the knife this way to where I want it. And I didn't do it right, but I put tape across the spine of the blade all the way up to here. So that this clamp is going to grab it. Now with this clamp, I also tighten it down, but I'm not super excessive with the clamping. This is that clamp nice and lightly, but I tighten it down. So this clamp is making sure that the blade is you know, attached and holding on and has a firm grip that the knife's not going to move off. And this clamp is helping to just keep things steady so that the blade won't flex. So let me turn, turn this and show what I mean. So now going this way, what I don't want to have is only a clamp here and not this, because then when I'm sharpening here on that side, even though there's not much pressure on it, the whole blade is going to want to flex down. The thinner the blade, the more it's going to do that. So you want this, this here to stop the whole thing from flexing down. And that's what that does. So this clamp, this clamp is holding the thing on. That clamp is guiding it, holding things straight. And so now I can sharpen and then flip it, you know, sharpen the other side and off to the races. What do you do if you've got a knife that's a full flat grind or a full hollow grind right up to the spine? Well, I watched one guy do a video and he was doing actually another Hapstone video. I think it was on the R1. And he was talking about taking masking tape or something and, you know, putting it, putting that masking tape just below, a little bit below the edge. And I've done this before too, and sometimes it works okay. And you might have to put a couple layers of it on there. And you do it on both sides of the blade. So now this spot right here is just as thick as the spine measured this way on the edge. And then that will help keep it flat. But there's a better way. So this little guy is a full hollow grind and you've got maybe an eighth of an inch, uh, like three millimeters there that it's flat. But if I go like this, now I've got a quarter of an inch or more that's flat. And I can do that. I can use that all day long. And let's just assume I got tape on here. I flex it like that. And then I put it on and I do the same thing that I mentioned before. I use this one to clamp onto that flat section and take a good hold on that knife 
and then I tighten these down just to hold it from moving. So this one is keeping it straight, and these ones, well, they're helping keep it straight and helping keep it still. So there's nothing wrong with having this knife sitting like that. So this is here on this angle. That's no big deal. Watch this. You see this? I can still sharpen all the way to this edge. No problem. Full freedom of movement all the way across. And I've held it strong. You don't have to keep... You don't have to keep the knife like this. You can put it on like that. Nothing wrong with that. Just a neat little trick that can give you a better, firmer clamp. Now keep watching, I got even more. Now what do you do if you have almost exclusively full flat grinds? I got a guy who wrote to me just today. He sharpens basically his kitchen knives and that's all he's got. And a lot of those are full flat grinds. Well, you get a system like this V7 and full flat grinds, you can just lay them down on here and I've got a whole video about how to do those. And you don't need to clamp them at all and don't you're not concerned about that at all. You just lay them down on this magnetic face and use this plate to adjust where it goes. You can watch the video about the V7. Or if you've got a whole bunch of full flat grinds and you've got others, well then you, you just stick around because Hapstone is making different attachments to put on here. So you can take this whole rotating clamp system off eventually and they're going to have a table that you can put on here. I don't know when that's going to be available. <laughs> you know, the R1 itself took about a year to make and get out in production. So the attachments, I can't guarantee that the attachments are coming out. Maybe the attachments will come, maybe the attachments won't come, but you know, a table system will work just great for that kind of thing. We're almost done. We're on number four now. When you've got your stones and your sharpening, they will come out of true. You're gonna use them up and the center is gonna get used up and it's gonna get a dish in it. So this will be thicker here, thicker here and thinner in here. I've got a whole video about how to flatten wet stones. That's those bigger stones that people put on a tabletop and they sharpen their knives on a table, on a, on a wet thing over in their kitchen. You can use that same system to flatten these and that's exactly what I do. All of my stones, I flatten them occasionally because once they're out of true, then I've changed the thickness and then it's more work to, you know, I'm always getting a different thickness stone when I'm putting in a different stone. But worse than that, I'm changing the angle that I'm sharpening at. So when I'm sharpening something, if I sharpen with the full thickness, it's one angle. If I bring this down another two millimeters, or let's say I bring it up another two millimeters, you can see that the angle is different. Now, of course, I'm going more than two millimeters, but every time you change the thickness of the stone, so and the stone's got different thickness and spots, you're changing the angle, and that's gonna make it harder to get a pristine, beautiful, perfect edge. So flatten your stones. Watch the other video. I'll have a link to it down in the description below. I might have a link to it at the very end of this video on the screen. Well, during editing, I realized this video is long enough. I decided I'm going to put the thickness compensator section in a separate video. And uh, that'll be by the end of May, it'll come out. And so I've covered a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm going to put this video in my CCEU list, in my playlist, that's Canadian Cutting Edge University, not a real educational institution, with uh, other videos, all kinds of hints on sharpening knives and all about knives and what how knives uh, are made and all kinds of different things, so that you can look it up in the future. Almost everything you saw here applies to all kinds of different sharpening systems, you know, guided systems where you clamp a knife in place or put a knife down on a surface and keep it in place and then you rub a stone across it. So I'm sure it's going to be helpful for many of you for a very long time. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping sponsor my videos. Uh, it's a little bit of money that comes in every month. Uh, it's less than $100, but it does help out because it's not cheap making videos. Thank you so much for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. 
And remember, everybody, cut towards your chum, not your thumb.